Ta-da! And I still got room. What's well, awesome having room? <laughs> yeah, and a powerhouse, a little workhorse. It's 26 horsepower. Awesome, short, small. And people complain about the turning radius, but man, this thing turns on a dime. I mean, it might get right around. I'm getting ready to drain the hydraulic fluid. And you see, I got it level. I had to jack it up. As you can see, I'm a good two inches off the floor here, that way. <clears throat> and I'm getting ready to pull all of the hydraulic lines off of it, so I got this set up to be able to hold the boom because you can't get to none of these fittings right here when the boom is down because these braces right here are in the way. Uh, I need, I got a leak right here on the steering, so I have to check that. It only does, it only leaks with water in it, and this thing is full of water, so I'm taking every line off of it. And you can tell I got a little setup going on here with this strap coming all the way back to here, and uh, I pulled it over. So I could get to them two bolt holes right there, and I pulled it that away. And now I got to go up with it, so I got to put the jack up under this side and go up and put these two bolts in I bought for it. Of course, I had to loosen those bolts, the only two there, and then these right here, and the other two on the other side to get it to twist a little bit to move around. And boy, this thing really moved. I mean, it moved on over. And when I get it, when I get all everything ready and the hoses off of it, I'll take and get a bar, go across here and over there, and I'll have it where I put two pins in it, one on each side, and I'm going to squeeze that thing together as far as I can get it, and even try to pull these up over. And then when I get that done, I'll hit it with a welder down at the bottom some more <clears throat> and tighten these down real good. But that'll stiffen it up. I don't know why. I guess when they worked on the hydraulics, uh, they forgot those two bolts and couldn't get them in after they had all the lines hooked up. So there you have it. Right. I'm level this way and I am level this way both directions so that when I drain the oil the hydraulic fluid uh, it'll all come out and I'm going to take a dryer a heat gun and put it on low and leave the bottom case vent open and I'm just going to flood this with nothing but warm air and try to dry some of that water up out of the casing I probably had to sit for two days like that <clears throat> take all these lines off Take this off, take these lines, let them drain completely out. You know, I got to get all the water out of the system. <clears throat> Squeeze the, uh, when I get it all done, I'll have to take these bolts out right here, shove them cylinders all the way back so what fluids in here will go out. You know, that's really the only way to do it. And the easy way would be to let the boom down <clears throat> the bucket and then I only had to go a couple inches move it that way and the same thing with the bucket uh, cylinders I pretty much got them done except for about an inch and a half maybe so I'll undo it uh, let the bucket roll forward and then I'll shove the cylinders up and then put the lines on it and then when I'm ready to put it together uh, after I get all the lines hooked up and hydraulic fluid in it, I'll just work the thing right here so that it'll shove the arms backwards and down, and I can pick the bucket back up. Yep, I like having room. I can walk all the way around this thing. Yeah, I'll probably order a new muffler. That was bad. And get me an extension so that it'll go all the way out the ass of the tractor back there. And I got to take the lines off the pump here. 
the re the return it goes up here in the feed it goes into the pump and then the out this is in and that's out this is low and that's high uh take them off and let them drain out this one's gonna have fluid stuck right in here between this going down and then going up right there there's gonna be fluid stuck in there so i'll have to get that out <clears throat> take the filter off drain it real good and then dry it out I uh, really don't have a choice because I don't have $70 to spend for a filter I'm going to drain the engine oil and then drain that uh, filter out on the engine oil and i got to do something right here I'll probably get me some real thick copper wire take this loose because you see the little Threads, I mean, well, they're gear is what they are. Uh, for, I don't know what they really call them, but anyway, I got a lot of play in the tire like that. So I'm going to get the tire straight, loosen that up real good, spread it, put me some wire in there. I'm going to set it down on the ground first. Then put me some wire in there that'll grip onto that. And uh, I thought of several things, but everything I think of is just going to be screwed up and I can't do it. I thought about welding a nut right here and then putting a bolt over here and welding a bolt over here and then cutting the top of the nut so that the bolt slipped down in there and it would hold it. But then you're dealing with shit you got shit in the way. <clears throat> and I'd cook that grease. That grease would just cook when I go to welding it. And then I won't be able to get a grease gun on that zert so i think using copper wire so you know good hard romex copper wire put a piece over here put a piece over here and just try to fill it up as much as possible and then squeeze it as tight as i can around it so that it grip it probably only get one in there it shows uh the 1510 has actually got a woodruff key up in here or over there somewhere so this might have one and it's gone you just don't know but uh i'm loving a little tractor you can tell i gotta replace the lines yeah and the main thing is replace these fittings right here and i don't know i might try to salvage this metal pipe you know i got one here and i got one there i might try to salvage them but then you know, I'd probably come out better just putting all the hose on it. Run a hose all the way from there to here, here, bring it up. You know, so it's, I got to map it out is what I got to do because they should be up. You see that bolt hole? That's where they should be. That's how high they should be. And then they should be all the way over. That way that when they go down, they, it doesn't interfere right here. But when they go down now, they just scrub like hell. <clears throat> so something's wrong. And something's wrong on that right there. And I'll change all that. I'll just use zip ties is what I'll do. I'll zip tie down there. I'll zip tie up here. Bring them down and zip tie across here. The same thing across here. You know. Until I can figure out what to do to it. Weld a boat and then... Put a nut on it, so I mean, uh, yeah, weld a boat to it and then use those things, these right here, and then use a nut to pull it down. I think that might work. I, I don't know, I just have to look at it and see. But the main thing is change the lines, get them off, drain them, everything, get the cylinders shoved back up and drained and get all the water out of it because after an hour i can't steer it anymore and it won't lift the bucket up and down anymore and it's full of water i mean that all turned from honey to milk instantly and it's because i didn't drain it completely <clears throat> i didn't drain the pump i didn't drain the cylinders and well, when it's just oil, it doesn't seem to leak out the uh, seals. But when it's got that water in there, man, it, it leaks like crazy. It leaks like crazy here. 
and then it shoots a stream out right here out of this thing that big round thing right there it shoots it forward and i got an oil leak it's not major because see it's not there i'm hoping that it's just the uh puke tube uh it's vent case tube i hope that that's what that is and uh well I pressure washed it now before I brought it in. And I'll crank it and run it tomorrow. And then after that, I'll run it for about 30 minutes. Because I've already run it for a solid hour. Running the PTO, working the hydraulics. I've got, I put this in here, the seafoam. Out right here, Hydra Tune. Uh, I'm not real sure about that stuff i probably just wasted my money but i put a can in there it's one can per four gallons and it's got 4.7 gallons in it something like that almost four and three quarters so <clears throat> when i go back with it i'll put a can and a half because this says you can run it in the tractor constantly it'll keep the fluid clean keep your pump clean and it'll clean everything out clean all the valves and everything so i probably got two more hydraulic changes after i get all this done and get all of the fluid out of these lines and i'm gonna change some fittings out so i can have some quick er fittings because these are just <clears throat> you'll actually have to roll and spin this right here to get it in there. So I'm gonna put a fit in here, just like these, so that you can turn the fitting. Well, that ain't one. Like that one right there. You can turn the fitting, and it'll lock it on there. So it would be a male with a female. So that that male would go in the female, and then you can just hold it back up here, and then do it on there. Other than that, <clears throat> you gotta have one end of this line off to be able to get this out right here you got to twist and the line's got to twist at the same time yay so i'm gonna change that see there's one right there there's one right there and it wouldn't hurt to have one right here on each cylinder needs it let's see needs one right there there's one uh there's one and it needs one right down there so there you have it that's what i'm looking at so i got three eighths and half inch hose that i have to buy and i gotta map all this out the half inch is going to be return the three eighths is going to be the uh high pressure you got low pressure and high pressure you know there it is guys uh wheel came in uh it had a bunch of chips and everything so i bought that and it's a wider white than what that is that's an off-white sort of but it's not dented not bent <clears throat> where that one was bent down there and actually the tire went flat on me yeah because the bend was up here and the, when the weight was on it it actually let the air out yeah i was pissed about that because as a bitch i put that tire on uh i had to take a rope wrap a rope around it pull it as tight as i could wrap another rope around it and pull it as tight as i could or two ropes to get the bead to spread you know you got to push the tire down and make the bead spread out and then i can get it to take air Ooh. Man, right, I'm going to buy some of that uh, green slime and fill these suckers up or put a quart in each tire. And I'll probably put a quart in each one of these right here too. Probably half a gallon in these. This need about a gallon, really. A gallon and a gallon. Uh, but there you have it. That's my tractor. And she'll crank right up. Uh, just got to turn the key to the left, heat them glow plugs up, turn it over to the right, and push that button. That's because somebody wired it that way. It's supposed to do it with a key, but 
Uh, you know, shit. <laughs> I gotta figure out what that wire is down there. Uh, it's come off. It, I think it goes on a starter. I'll have to look at it. But that's it. Enjoy. Peace. Nanny, nanny, shots, bought, and all that other good shit. And it's in here. And look, I got plenty of room. That's that 19 something foot right here from that uh, heater or 16 foot. And the tractor's only uh, 13 foot long, so yeah, it was about 16 foot. From the bucket to right back here is uh, 13 foot. Nice. 26 horsepower. Enjoy. Peace. Nanny, nanny, shot about and all that other good shit. Bye.